Last summer, I did a roundup of manual camera apps for Android, and I was kind of comparing those versus the built-in app on something like the LG V10 or the Samsung Galaxy S7. Those native apps that give you manual camera control are very good. I found the add-on ones, even the best, had some bugs, had some limitations. Now, to be fair, some of those limitations are either Android, the API that's provided, or even the manufacturers of the different smartphones add on or block certain ones or certain features and really kind of limit what you can do. The same applies to Lightroom, but it is quite nice and now does provide DNG control or DNG shooting on a variety of devices. You'll have to check the list to see if yours is supported, but let's take a quick look at this app and its update. So I'm gonna launch Lightroom. Uh, this is the latest version of Lightroom that came out on July 13th. And in the bottom right corner, I have got a little camera icon. If I tap that, I launch the Lightroom camera. Now I'm in pro mode. Let's back out of that for a second and take you to automatic so you can see your options. Uh, right away over on the left hand side, I have the ability to switch it to a selfie camera or the front facing camera. I have my flash auto on or off. And of course I have that DNG. Again, this is not going to be available on all devices not all provide the ability to shoot or capture in DNG, but those that do, you'll now have that option. It's not as exciting as a raw file from a DSLR because you are still limited by this smaller sensor, but it is quite nice to have that ability when you want to do a little bit more post-processing, especially in your kind of white balance or your uh, temperature. You need to change that white balance and temperature, the same thing, temperature and tint. You want to make adjustments to that. The DNG gives you a lot more latitude. Same with the shadows and even the exposure to some degree. I tell you honestly, a lot of the time, I'm quite happy editing a JPEG on a smartphone uh, if I've gotten the shot right, right out of the camera. And that's what I try to do most of the time. But it gives you a little bit more control and flexibility and it's nice to have it, especially when you work with that DNG in something like Lightroom Mobile. Let's get back out of the auto mode though and get to professional mode and look at this little panel we have over here on the right hand side. First we have our shutter speed. Now again, this is device dependent, but I have a maximum of 29 seconds. So you can actually do some slow exposure or long exposure, light painting. That's pretty nifty. We have our ISO from 800 down to 50. So again, having control over that, and there are times where the camera's like, this scene is dark, I need to boost my ISO way up to 800, and on these small sensors, that's very noisy, extremely noisy, even when you capture a DNG. So being able to limit that upper ISO that you're shooting with, with this control, is nice. We have our white balance settings, and honestly, right now, we just have some gorgeous natural light. So white balance auto looks really good. And above that, we have our focus tool. Now, this is the first where I really kind of want to demonstrate what we can do here. Um, it's in auto mode right now, so it's automatically trying to focus as I point it at something. Or I could tap. Let's get half of that in, half of that out. So tap to focus there, tap to focus back there. That's nothing new. But if I drag the slider, I've suddenly taken over control and I can manually focus from macro to uh, off in the distance infinity. Uh, one of my tips and tricks for getting best macro photos from any camera that allows you to set it at macro is to set it at macro and then to move it back and forward until you get that focus point exactly where it's in focus. Uh, if you keep this and tapping it or tapping reset will now bring it back. If you get close and you tap and you try to see if it focuses, you're oftentimes limited in exactly how close you can get and by moving it backward and forward, you can get at that maximum more easily. So I'm gonna come back out of auto and make sure it's on macro and just move it until it is where I'm happiest with it. And I'm gonna snap that picture. And you see it's pretty responsive, but not amazingly responsive. Let's hit the reset button. And then let's hit the three dots up above and look at the other kind of options we have. In our settings, we can assign the volume keys, in this case, exposure, compensation, capture, or zoom. We can make sure the max screen brightness is on when we launch the camera, and I do appreciate that. Uh, Geotagging photos, whether or not we get our tool tips and resetting everything to default. Below that, we have the ability to do our rule of thirds grid, or halves, 
or the golden ratio. So that's all there as well. And the level. I have those things on already. So you can see the uh, rule of thirds is up there. And you can see the level is that crosshairs that's moving. We have both our level and also what I call our kind of our pitch um, the up and down. And we can see that we're perfectly level and there. So that's nice to have all that. We've got our timers, 2, 5, and 10 seconds. And that's nice to have if you're going to be shooting longer exposures with the camera stabilized some way. That way you don't have to jiggle it as you touch the button. And we have our crop ratio from 16 to 9 all the way to 1 to 1. And one of the kind of hidden features, it's not really hidden because they tell you about it in the tool tip the first time you launch the app, is that exposure control that I showed you. Um, and a lot of times having exposure control, that's all I need to make me happy. I don't necessarily need to mess with the shutter speed or the ISO. I just want to say, no, you need to expose this a little bit under what you think is right. Because again, just like our camera's brains, a lot of times it's trying for that maximum, or sorry, it's trying for that even 18% gray value of exposure and being able to photograph a black cat and make it actually black or a white snowy scene and make sure that it is not getting gray. That's nice to be able to change that exposure compensation. So I've taken one picture already. You can actually see I've taken several. You can tap in the bottom right corner to get a, a look at your image that you shot there. And if you're happy with it, you can X out of here, and now you're back into Lightroom, uh, and you can tap those Lightroom folders, photos, and bring up this most recent image that I just shot. Now we have all of these Lightroom tools available to us. I'm gonna go through these very quickly because I've got another video that takes a little bit more detail and time to go into each of these. But again, we can crop it. I shot it at 16 by nine, but we could now change that to a one-to-one, -one, um, or we could change it to some custom we actually even have the auto straighten button. So you hit that, it thinks for a minute about what is vertical. And I think it's gonna really struggle with this because there aren't any vertical lines. It did a terrible job. So I'm gonna click X so it gets back out of that. Um, and you can also flip and uh, change the rotation. Then we've got what looks like little filter symbols, but I don't want you to think of these as filters like in Instagram. These are really presets like you have in Lightroom and you can apply multiple ones on top of each other. We've got our, actually, all right, take it back. These should be thought of in the first creative section as Instagram presets or Instagram filters. But really the rest of these um, are just nice presets and you can add punch and you can add some effects in there as well. And if you don't like that, you can then go into the editing panel yourself and you have pretty much all of the controls that Lightroom gives you in that basic module. As I said, white balance, temperature, uh, your tint, your exposure, your contrast. Real quick, if I come back over here and let's add a little bit of clarity to it because you need to add clarity to these DNGs. Um, then I come back to here, you'll see as I go over to the clarity that it's plus 30 now. So those presets have applied themselves and you can make finer adjustments by clicking and dragging up or down to change the amount of clarity. Um, that all looks pretty straightforward, but make sure you check out what's hidden underneath the little camera kind of lens aperture icon in the bottom left. You can get into the tone curve. You can make changes to the vignette that we saw in the other place. So we can click in our amount and we can drag down to kind of add a strong vignette, maybe too strong there. We also have our split toning, um, and we can come in here and make changes as well. This is quite powerful on a mobile device. And oops, sorry, I meant to click. Uh, color in black and white. I've shown this in a uh, video I'll link at the end of how to really make your kind of fall colors pop. You can drag these individual colors up and down to boost the saturation and the luminance, and of course, adjust the hue of them as well. Let's go to the saturation, um, and let's find the purple. We really want the purple on the top of this artichoke to pop. And uh, did you know that's what it was? It's an artichoke I didn't know either. I was told a few minutes ago. So you can drag the purple up um, and really kind of saturate the purples. It still looks fairly natural because you haven't oversaturated the whole thing, just the specific color you were looking to edit. But you can change all of that there as well. And you even have the option of dehaze now in the mobile. So Snapseed has been my default go-to for many say years now, at least two solid years. Uh, that's many, right? And it's quick, it's efficient, and I really love what it can do. But I have to say Lightroom Mobile is coming on strong. It is not nearly as buggy as it was a few releases ago. It's much more stable, although not quite as stable as Snapseed. Um, but it does give you a 
good bit more power. Really the only thing it's missing is kind of the healing brush tool. Snapseed does have that and I'll show you in a video coming soon just how awesome that often works and how you can get very precise and detailed fixing. But Lightroom Mobile looks quite nice. Check it out on your device. See if you can do the full DNG captures, edit them some. But remember, again, it's not going to give you as big a difference as a raw file from a camera uh, from a DSLR or a larger censored point and shoot or mirrorless. Uh, but it does give you more control and uh, it is fun to have that option when you want it to be able to shoot and edit a little bit more. If Lightroom Mobile is now your favorite option, I'd love to hear in the comments, or do you have an alternative choice? Maybe you prefer Snapseed like I have for a long time, but I think I'm gonna force myself to start using Lightroom. I mostly go to Snapseed just because I'm so quick and easy with it, um, but uh, I will start using Lightroom more. I'd love to hear your thoughts right down in the comments. And I've been talking about Android, but the update on iOS as well now allows you to bring in raw files from a DSLR and edit those. I haven't tried that yet. I'd love to hear your results and how well it works for you and what cameras it's working for in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a quick thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, that's a wonderful way to thank me for my time and to make sure you're notified of future videos, tips, tricks, stuff like that. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.